All right, Jaime, could you could you tell about who you are and how you have been using the Sense system? Yes, hello uh, everyone. My name is Jaime de la Calle. So I exercise physiology PhD um, and CEO uh, from my company um, serverrendimiento.com or overperformance.com. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, yeah, we are using the Sense sensor uh, motion on, in our services. Uh, we have developed um, uh, our own shell to place the sensor close to the body mass uh, center. And, and the purpose is to track and monitor all the workouts for indoor and explosive sports such as tennis, badminton, handball, basketball, and, and this kind of, of, of sport. Uh, based in, 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 in a cloud system where data is transferred automatically to the servers and, and we then analyze it with our own algorithms, which um, took us almost a year to develop, in which we um, uh, detect and identify all events, all efforts from the players or athletes, and then provide some calculations, some customized calculations to the coaches. Um, and this is what, what we do with Sense, Sense Sensor. Mm. So, so when you were looking for different options for this kind of thing, why why did you went with the sense sense device? What were the features that that made the decision? It was quite good advantages. So, first, you need to do not try to do not interact with uh, elite athletes on the on the workouts on the sessions. Um, you don't have to turn on and off; it does automatically. You don't have to charge it, so the battery is lasting at least six months. Um, data is transferred not through a physical cable, but um, just automatically through the cell phone. And most importantly, it's it's very very light, and you can wear them. You can wear it uh, without any um, interaction or disturbance in your in your training session. Mm. So basically, it's a very small device under under mm-hmm. 10 grams and and basically athletes don't need to need to charge they just put it clip it on and and yes. you will get the data wherever you are even from around the world you can get the data you can analyze the training system and then you can uh, tell the coach the feedback related to this this what you have measured exactly yes this is how it works actually we we also have um, 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 customized analysis and, and with different purposes like training or competition. And we, we always um, supervise, the human supervise uh, this, this data to provide the best feedback to coaches to make better decisions for their athletes. So mm-hmm. you are measuring three axial acceleration from the center of the mass. Uh, what kind mm-hmm. of things you analyze and why do you think these are important for the performance and daily monitoring of uh, mm-hmm. explosive sports? Yes. Well, if you place an accelerometer um, um, at the back of the, of the player or, or athlete and then start to measure, acceleration always measures something, right? But we need to differentiate if uh, what we are measuring is relevant as a workload, if it's physiologically rele- relevant to, to take into account as workload or not. For example, if, if player or athletes are working on the court, um, we don't want this data to be quantified as workload because people usually work on, on the daily routine. Right. So uh, we have developed an algorithm which detects when the exercise starts, when there is a, a, a pretty good intensity, um, and and then that exercise is, has has a minimum of, of time of effort, and and then we can get the event, the whole event of duration. Let's say, for example, if you are playing one point in tennis on a tennis court. Uh, lasting 26 seconds, you will get those 26 seconds of accelerations. And then you can get some calculations like, for example, workload, um, duration, what's the racing until the next event, and so on. So we got very uh, reliable and good information. And, and 
and this is um, very appreciated by the coaches. Mm. And and many athletes are are measuring, for example, heart rate, which tells about cardiovascular loading, or mm-hmm. or maybe they are messi- measuring position with the GPS. What do you see as advantages measuring actually acceleration? What um, I have to say that acceleration is is um, it's simpler than GPS. Um, uh, the the measure it's. It has no delay. GPS has a delay, for example. Mm. And comparing with the heart rate, for example, the heart rate, it doesn't react at the time, but heart rate reacts when there is a lack of uh, oxygen in the muscle, which maybe can pass 10, 15 seconds until your heart reacts. So acceleration Mm. is very instant um, measurement that we take. And, And it's also... Um, a simple and reliable tool that need to be used, uh, let's say, um, let, need to be analyzed in, in a proper way, right? So mm. if if you use or spend a little bit of time in developing uh, an algorithm, then then you will get much better information than GPS and, and heart rate. Mm. And would you agree that? The heart rate is good to measure the cardiovascular load, but for example, in in badminton, it's more about the accelerations which are causing the neuromuscular fatigue, and that you cannot actually measure with the with the heart rate. Yes, when you got many peaks of the very high, the highest accelerations, you know you are performing very good. But if you get some kind of um, fatigue, neuromuscular fatigue, uh, you will not be able to um, to accelerate at that intensity. And that's one of the indicators we use to to address if the athlete is fatigued or or not. <laughs> 